last time we talked to you, you said that yeah, you could use another interior twitchy yeah. pass rusher on that defensive line, and it looks like you got one. What, what are your first impressions of Devontae? Yeah, I mean, one, loved his college film, uh, evaluation. You know, again, played in a system that didn't necessarily see those tools from a standpoint of they play a lot of head up alignment and technique. So, um, really got to see a lot of them down at the Senior Bowl watching that film and uh, love what he brings to the table. Now we just got to get him to play the way we need him to play at our level here. And, and uh, but we're excited about him for what's sure. He, what does he bring to the table? Well, one, he can be really good on first and second down. And he's an inside guy that has some unique traits as a pass rusher. Some things that you can't teach, uh, you just naturally have. He, he's got twitch. Um, I, I, I'd like to call it uh, awkward movements. You know, some movements he can be put in that other guys can't be, and he can recover from those things. So, um, and, and he's got a high motor, uh, just a natural high motor. So, really, really good defensive line traits. Outside of just the individual talent of the players, I think, I mean, drafting two guys from that defense, what do you see about that group as a whole that was, okay, this is another standard of college football defense? Yeah, I mean, across the board, uh, I think all those guys on that defense will play in the NFL. They've done a great job of, one, recruiting uh, the right type of kids with the right uh, type of traits, and then they developed them. They taught them how to play the game. Uh, their front, they use their hands very well. Um, what they do allows those guys to play fast. And when you can play fast and physical as a group, it take, takes you a long ways. So pr pretty good football they're doing over there in Georgia. Jerry, you mentioned the college film. Not, Jordan Davis obviously was a first round pick too, played next to him a lot. Are you able to get a feel for not only what Devontae does well individually, but maybe how he would fit with a guy like Kenny. I don't know if there's a lot of comparisons between Kenny and Davis, but the idea of seeing how he plays off another guy who's a pretty darn good player. Yeah, I, I think um, ultimately we'll figure those things out when we get them here. Um, what they did there, they worked well together. Um, but, you know, first and second down is a whole nother world. But third down, you know, we're going to work as one. And uh, if we can get him to do the things we think he can, all right, if people want to double one guy, now you got another guy that can win. If they want to double another guy, you got another guy that can win. So ultimately, we like finding matchups and getting guys those opportunities to show that they can win, you know? Very big guy, that athletic ability that they has. How rare is that? Yeah, I mean, shoot, there was a couple of those guys in the draft, but I mean, he, from an athletic standpoint and a twitch standpoint, he stands out. I mean, he, he, uh, Big, athletic, um, and again, plays with a high motor. You see a lot of guys walking the street that are big, good-looking dudes, and you get them on the field and they don't play with that motor. Like, he plays with a natural motor. Even though we teach and coach effort, he's a guy that you really don't have to say anything to. Um, a lot like Kenny, plays hard all the time. And, uh, you know, I'm excited about that. You know, we've seen you coach on the field now for a long time, so we're kind of familiar with your MO. Mm -hmm. um, when we talked to Ford after the first practice, I think we talked to him for like eight or nine minutes, and he talked about you during like four or five of them. You clearly made an impression out on him, and he got after him, I think I saw a couple times too. Yeah, like, like anything, I'm a firm believer, right? As a teacher, right, when you, when you do something right, you pat them on the back, a little rah-rah. When they do something wrong, you teach them how to do it better. But when constant mistakes happen, right, now the intensity of how you got to get your point of across got to raise because they got to understand the sense of urgency of what we got to get done and accomplish. And, and a lot of these guys, I, I got to get them to understand, hey, this isn't college anymore. This isn't uh, for fun, right? This is your job. This is how you provide for your family. So you have to treat it different. And, and how do you treat it different? When you go home, it's not Xbox, PlayStation time. It's time for you to study, learn the playbook. And when you come back the next day, I'm going to know if you study just by questions I'm going to ask you and how fast you can respond to me, right? So you've got to get them to understand that it's more than just a game now. And then when they can learn and process everything you're giving them, then it becomes a game again because now they don't have to think. Now they can play fast and not have fear of failure, right? We don't want them to be on the field 
thinking about making a mistake. We want all those things to happen now, study, prepare, and when we get on the field, we can study who people are and what they do and then play fast. And I think um, I hit those guys early with that. And, and he's a guy that has, he looks great and um, good looking dude, massive body, right? Now we just got to get him to do what we need him to do at a high level. And uh, he's going to go through some ups and downs. But it's, it's been a really good um, rookie mini camp with those guys. And, and now that they're back here now, we're learning and something new every day, right? It, their heads are spinning. So you've, you've had success with later round guys, right? I mean, TJ's made some strides in the one year you've had. Absolutely. Uh, Kingsley, I know it didn't end the way you wanted it to here, but he was obviously making strides. Is that the key, though, is you have maybe some raw tools and it's what separates whether those guys is whether you can get after them and they can respond to it? Ultimately, at the end of the day, my job is to develop the talent I have. Right, wrong, or indifferent, whether this guy looks like Tarzan, plays like Jane, I got to get him to play like Tarzan, right? So development, development, development. And I'm a fundamental, I was taught fundamentals, fundamentals, fundamentals. And so when you can get those guys to dive into those fundamentals and get them, you can ask Kenny from day one to now. I don't have to tell Kenny much about fundamentals. He can now study and prepare the game, kind of like what I'm hitting on. And so these, these young guys, you know, I, and he's not here anymore, but, uh, you know, Lancaster was one, undrafted rookie free agent, okay? He did everything we asked him to do fundamentally, and then when somebody got hurt, he stepped in and filled the void. And he didn't skip a beat. He could play this position, he could play that position, he could play that position. Our motto is, you know, we're only as strong as our weakest link in the D-line room. And my job is to get that weakest link caught up to the top guy so there is no drop-off. So my expectations for an undrafted rookie free agent or uh, a first-round draft pick are no different than Kenny, Dean, TJ, you know, Jay Reed. They're going to be held to that standard. And, and if it's not that standard, I'm not going to be happy, right? But again, we have a great relationship. And, and with these young guys, I'm building that every day. I'm able to coach those guys hard because they know it's genuine and I'm there to help them. I'm not there to hurt them. Everything I'm doing is to help them. So um, I know I kind of got long-winded there, but it, it's, it's all a process in, in everything we do as a teacher, for sure. Well, sure, you got an interesting group. You've got, obviously, you got the draft picks. You've got some undrafted guys. You've got the veterans. Mm -hmm. You've got Jaron, who's new to here, but has played a lot of football. So what are the expectations for, like, Kenny and Dean compared to Jaron, compared to all these rookies that you got in here? So I was there. Like, different spots. Just like I said, once the season starts, the expectation is for the room and the I'm standard. Sorry, I meant for OTAs coming up. That, I'm sorry, I didn't preface it that right. Yep. As far as what's coming up here, starting next week. Yeah, so just the expectations are to continue to grow and develop. And you got guys that know the system here already. And then you got guys that are learning, that are free agents. Then you got guys that are rookies. So everybody's going to be on different levels. My, my job and goal is for them and expectations or by the end of the OTAs that the young guys are caught up mentally with the old guys, and then the game can start slowing down for them. You know, even the, you know, Jay Reed, the new guy coming in. Learn the system. Learn the system. Learn how we play blocks. Learn how we rush the quarterback. Learn how we need to be all on the same page. So when we leave, all right, my whole deal is if you don't use it, you lose it. So when guys go home for their break, continue to work on the things that we've done over this time period. So when you come back, you don't lose what you've gained. You know, we talk to them all the time, coming back the way you left, coming back the way you left, whether that's in shape, whether that's handwork, whether that's pad level, you can do things when you're at home. So the expectation is for the young guys, the free agents to get caught up to the Kinneys and the Deans of the world.